a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be in friends. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. Coming up on the program today, going to talk about a sheriff in Washington State who says he will not be enforcing stay-at-home orders, uh, including... Uh, orders for gun stores to stay closed. Plus, there's a gun shop in Massachusetts that has remained open despite Governor Charlie Baker and Attorney General Maura Healy's uh, actions to try to shut down uh, gun stores in the Bay State. We'll uh, get to both of those stories momentarily. Also, uh, coming up on the program today, we do have our armed citizen story. We have our uh, recidivist report, another coronavirus-related crime where the uh, uh, suspect... Won't be spending any time behind bars, at least not anytime soon, thanks to uh, coronavirus concerns uh, and a, a good deed of the day as well. But let's start with Snohomish County, Washington Sheriff uh, Adam Fortnoy, who on uh, Facebook uh, yesterday, on Wednesday, had a lengthy post, uh, sort of an open letter to Snohomish County residents and business owners, where he said he had just watched uh, Governor Jay Inslee's speech to Washingtonians regarding our approach to getting the state back to business, said he was left to wonder if he even has a plan. Uh, To be quite honest, I wasn't even sure what he was trying to say. Half of the time, he has no plan, has no details. This is simply not good enough, the sheriff says. Uh, In times where we have taken such drastic measures as the suspension of constitutional rights. Now, the uh, sheriff uh, went on to talk about uh, some of the things that he has seen there in Snohomish County. He says, as I arrive to work at the courthouse, I see landscapers show up each day to install new landscapes and maintain our flower beds. How has Governor Inslee deemed this essential work? However, a father who owns a construction company and works alone while outdoors is not allowed to run his business to make a living to provide for his wife and children. How has Governor Inslee deemed thousands of Boeing employees who work inside a factory building uh, essential, but building residential homes is not essential. If a factory with 20,000 plus employees each day can implement safe practices to conduct normal business operations, I'm entirely confident that our small business owners and independent contractors are more than capable of doing the same. Uh, he went on to say, as I have previously stated, I have not carried out any enforcement for the current stay-at-home order. As this order has continued on for well over a month now, and a majority of our, our residents cannot return to work to provide for their families, I've received a lot of outreach from concerned members of our community asking if Governor Inslee's order is a violation of our constitutional rights. And here's what he had to say about that. Quote, as your Sonohomish County Sheriff, yes, I believe that preventing business owners to operate their businesses and provide for their families intrudes on our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm greatly concerned for our small business owners and single-income families who have lost their primary source of income needed for survival. As your elected sheriff, I'll always put your constitutional rights above politics or popular opinion. We have the right to peaceably assemble. We have the right to keep and bear arms. We have the right to attend church service of any denomination. The impacts of COVID-19 no longer warrant the suspension of our constitutional rights. And he said, along with other elected sheriffs around our state, the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office will not be enforcing an order preventing religious freedoms or constitutional rights. I strongly encourage each of you to reach out and contact your council members, local leaders, and state representatives to demand that we allow businesses to begin reopening and allow our residents, all of them, to return to work if they choose to do so. Again, a uh, lengthy message from Sheriff Adam Fortney there in Snohomish County, Washington. Uh, one of a growing number of uh, law enforcement around the country that is saying, okay, okay s- stop with some of this stuff. Uh, I believe the police officers union in Houston, Texas, uh, also uh, had a uh, social media post uh, on Wednesday talking about the wearing of masks. There is an order uh, by the... Uh, uh, who was this? I guess by the the judge in uh, Harris County, uh, ordering those over the age of ten uh, to wear a mask uh, at all times out in public. And here's what they said: They said uh, it's come to our attention that County Judge Lena Hidalgo will issue an order this afternoon for all of Harris County, making it mandatory for anybody over the age of ten to wear a mask in public. Now we want to be very clear. The Houston Police Officers Union wrote. 
Uh, the Houston Police Officers Union believes everyone should be wearing a mask in public in order to protect ourselves from the virus, and we're encouraging all of our officers to wear a mask. However, they say we draw the line at the draconian measures that Hidalgo has decided to engage in. Our officers work every single day to bridge the gap with our community and earn their trust, and we will not stand idly by and allow Hidalgo to tear that bridge down with her horrific leadership and echo chamber decision-making. The Houston Police Officers Union has made contact with the Attorney General's office. Uh, I'm assuming the State Attorney General, by the way, uh, Ken Paxton, not U.S. Attorney General uh, Bill Barr. Uh, and they are seeking an opinion on the legality of imposing a criminal penalty or fine for anyone not wearing a mask in public. By the way, keep in mind, until very recently, and, and, and in fact, most states still have laws on the books that make it a crime to wear a mask in public. They've had to now suspend those laws as part of the emergency uh, stay-at-home orders, uh, and now, in many cases, you've gone from being forbidden to wear a mask in public to now being required to wear a mask in public. Uh, the Houston Police Officers Union says, while we wait for that opinion, we are reminding and informing our officers that they have discretion, discretion, discretion in matters such as these. It is clear the so-called leader of Harris County lacks any critical thinking skills, but let me assure the public, our officers do. The last thing any of us need is to kick our community while they're down. Houston police officers are already stretched entirely too thin during the COVID-19 pandemic. Violent crime is up this year. Murder is up by 35%. Property crime is up. Burglaries by nearly 30%. And Houston police officers are staffing testing centers across the city. We do not have time to be pawns in Hidalgo's game of attempting to control the actions of law-abiding, taxpaying individuals of our community, especially since this idiotic order is possibly unconstitutional, uh, from the county judge. Let me assure the community our officers will continue to serve on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, risking our lives and our health to protect you. We will continue to serve with honor and respect our community, despite Hidalgo's best effort to erode that respect. Joe Gamaldi, the uh, president of the Houston Police Officers Union, uh, Fraternal Order Police Lodge 110. So the, uh, I mean, again, that, that pretty abundantly clear that, um, while the Houston Police Officers Union, again, they say, listen, we, we think everybody should wear a mask in public. But there's a difference, isn't there, between saying you should do something and you should be made to do something. I had a piece at Bearing Arms yesterday. Uh, I think the title was, uh, and for our, you can uh, access this if you're a, a VIP member of BearingArms.com. Uh and my headline was specifically about those who are going to these protests, these open it up protests, and they're carrying guns because I write for a Second Amendment website. Uh, so my headline was something like, you know, carrying a gun to a protest, you should wear a mask. And again, I didn't say you should be made to wear a mask. I said you should wear a mask if you are. And, and, and here was my argument, by the way. If you are uh, one of the millions of Americans who owns a firearm because you want to protect yourself. You clearly you care about your personal safety and the safety of your family and the people that you love, right? That's that maybe again is why you are a gun owner. Cool. Keep in mind that right now, at this moment in time, uh, there have been more fatalities since early February from the COVID nineteen coronavirus than there were homicides in the United States in all of 2018. That's the last number for which we have uh, accurate tallies from the FBI. We'll, sh we'll get 2019's numbers uh, here in a couple of months. Even if you believe that the uh, death rate or the death toll from coronavirus has been inflated, uh, and let's say you think it's, it's, it's actually half of what the official figures are because you've got people who, you know, may have had coronavirus, but they didn't die from coronavirus. If, if that's your line of thinking. We have still had more coronavirus-related deaths in this country since early February than all homicides in 2018, and obviously far more coronavirus deaths in this country this year than homicides in this country this year. So again, if you're concerned about your personal safety, and that's why you carry a gun. I think you should be just as concerned about personal safety, and if you're out there lobbying for uh, reopening the economy, uh, I think you, I, I think. A, practically speaking, uh, it demonstrates that you are committed to your personal health to mask up. Uh, but I think also just from a, uh, a persuasion uh, aspect in terms of being the, the most effective 
uh, grassroots lobbyist you can be. Uh, one of the things, you look at the polling right now, and a majority of the country says, now nah, let's stay at home. We're not ready to open it back up yet. Uh, if you want to move the needle on those numbers, particularly among independents, last poll I saw was a Reuters Ipsos poll came out yesterday, showed 70% of independents said, yeah, we're not, we're not ready for, you know, movie theaters and go back to work. Let's just, let's just stay at home. If you want to persuade those folks, the, I think the easiest way to do so is to demonstrate, look, we're not talking about being stupid. We're not claiming that the coronavirus isn't real. We're not saying that uh, this isn't something to be concerned about. But rather than flatten the curve, it's time to thread the needle, right? It's time to to make sure that we can open up the economy as much as possible while also ensuring that our healthcare systems are not overwhelmed, which is why we shut down the economy in the first place. It wasn't to prevent every coronavirus death, but it was to flatten the curve so that our hospital systems were not overwhelmed. People who were severely ill from the coronavirus could get the help that they needed, uh, and the doctors and the nurses and the frontline healthcare workers uh, could provide that care for them. There's been some goalpost shifting over the past couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, again, I think if you're out there advocating uh, whether, you know, to open it up, regardless, by the way, of whether or not you uh, have a farm with you, the more serious you take the coronavirus, I think the more serious you'll be taken. That's just my two cents. Uh, now, back to these acts of civil disobedience regarding the uh, stay-at-home order. So we talked about what's going on in Snohomish County with Sheriff uh, Adam Fortney. In uh, Middleborough, Massachusetts, you've got a uh, gun store that has remained open. Boston Globe reporting on this. It's uh, the Gun Runner Gun Shop. And they've been, not only have they been open for the, uh, uh, I mean, they just, they never closed. Uh, but the store owner has been pretty vocal. He's not hiding from the media here. John Costa is the uh, owner of the Gun Runner. Boston Globe reports while a Trump 2020 flag uh, fluttering uh, fluttered in the background, John Costa stood shoulder to shoulder with a Republican activist on Tuesday outside of his firearm shop, all while a Facebook live stream captured the small five-person rally honoring his defiance. Uh, the Boston Globe writes, Costa's open disregard is an extreme example of the pockets of disobedience that have sprouted in the face of Baker's non-essential business closure order, putting local boards of health on the lookout for companies unaware of the need or unwilling to close their doors as officials attempt to slow the virus's spread. Uh, the State Department of Labor Standards says it has issued cease and desist orders to 123 companies shuttering more than 350 locations statewide since the order was issued four weeks ago. Another 50 or so, they say, remain, quote, under investigation. Uh, that figure does not include any issues or any orders issued by municipalities. Um, in Wakefield, Massachusetts, uh, Mark Penagakis has kept a Mark's smoke stand and newsstand open. Says, look, I'm selling most of the stuff that you can find at a convenience store. They're allowed to stay open. Why am I not allowed to stay open? He also says that uh, given the fact he sells newspapers, he believes that he falls under the exemption carved out for, quote, workers who support radio, television, newspaper, and media services. The Boston Globe says that's generally, be, uh, generally been applied to reporters and news organizations. Yeah, well, here's the thing. If you um, want to stay employed as a journalist, and there have been mass layoffs throughout the uh, journalism industry over the past month or so, people need to be able to access your stuff. And physically buying a paper is one way that people can access your stuff. Um, Mark Panagaka says this wasn't an issue until this week when a representative of the Mystic Valley Public Health Coalition contacted him warning that he would be issued a season assist order unless he closed. He said, we're not trying to be rebels or anything. We thought we were fine. I'm definitely going to challenge the order. We're trying to do everything the right way. Uh, Mark Costa, on the other hand, <laughs> I think he is a bit of a rebel. I, I think he uh, is well aware that the uh, governor and the attorney general have uh, declined to declare gun stores essential businesses, meaning that they are uh, supposed to be closed right now in the state of Massachusetts. Um, today, Diana Ploss, who is a Republican activist and talk show host, uh, is planning a Liberate Massachusetts protest uh, outside of the uh, governor's home, uh, demanding that the state's, quote, economy must be reopened and people's Second Amendment rights uh, shall not be infringed. Uh, Governor Charlie Baker, meanwhile, on uh, Wednesday, said that uh, in reopening the local economy, the decisions are, quote, a little less about essential and non-essential businesses 
and more focus on the criteria for any business to be opened. He said, quote, this isn't being done to punish anybody, okay? It's being done to try to keep people safe, and it's being done based on data and information on an unprecedented virus as we gather and it comes together. Well, I, you know, I'm not sure that I completely buy that explanation from uh, Governor Charlie Baker. Uh, Because here's the thing, and I I think I mentioned this on the program before, not only are gun stores in Massachusetts declared non-essential and they're supposed to close, but they're also not eligible for any state help for small businesses that are forced to close. Now, that kind of sounds like gun stores are being singled out by a governor who has not been friendly to gun owners, by an attorney general who has been outright hostile uh, to the Second Amendment. Gun stores, unlike many small businesses that have been told to keep their doors shut and not let customers inside, are not getting any help, are not even eligible for any help from the state of Massachusetts. Now, they can apply for federal PPP funds, uh, but the state of Massachusetts, not lifting a finger to do anything to ensure that these gun stores can reopen for business when the stay-at-home order has been lifted. And I suspect that uh, anti-gun activists like the Attorney General uh, there in Massachusetts, Maura Healy, would be more than happy to see every gun store in Massachusetts be unable to reopen after this crisis has passed. I'm sure gun control advocates would would be thrilled if every gun store in the state were forced to close forever because of the uh, financial losses that they're suffering at the moment. Um, Costa, by the way, the owner of uh, the gun runner, uh, has been cited uh, there in Middleborough, he did get a local cease and desist order, but uh, he says that he is uh, uh, appealing uh, that uh, cease and desist order. Uh, Jim Dooley, who owns the Middleborough gun shop, also in Middleborough, Mass., he's also got a uh, cease and desist order. Uh, they shut down after they received the letter. Uh, Jim Dooley said a lot of people are staying home. They work from home. They can get their health and welfare taken care of. They can pay their rent. I can't do that. He said, we have people golfing over the weekend. What do they get? They got run off the golf course. Me? He said, I'm losing tens of thousands of dollars. And uh, he is losing tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, So, again, we'll see what happens here. But in the meantime, at least one of those uh, gun stores uh, is open. And, you know, the the one thing that Governor Baker said that I, I, I don't disagree with, although, again, I'm not sure how much he means it, uh, but the idea of, okay, you know, when we are reopening the economy, it's not going to be about essential and non-essential. It's going to be about best practices. That, in my opinion, again, not to stray too far afield from our uh, primary subject matter, but but that, in my opinion, is absolutely critical. Uh, you know, it, 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 at this point, even for those, quote unquote, non-essential businesses, those businesses are essential to the people who work there. To these small business owners who, who, who you know, depend on the income uh, from the company that they have built up, it is absolutely essential to their lives that, uh, that, that they be able to reopen their doors and start serving customers as soon as possible. Again, doesn't mean that uh, things go right back to normal, but you go, I go back to that idea of instead of flattening the curve, it's threading the needle. You got to thread that needle. How many of these stores can we reopen? What type of policies can we put in place to try to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus? And by the way, as we learn more about the coronavirus, more treatments come online. Uh, a lot of these uh, measures can either be rescinded or they can be uh, weakened, right? And we can open ourselves up even more. But what, where do, how soon can we get to doable, not perfect, not great, but doable uh, in terms of allowing these businesses to resume some type of operation and get revenue coming back in so that they don't lose the companies that they have built up. All right, let's get to today's. I'm going to go, we're going to go, okay, I'm getting off a soapbox. And now we're going to go a return to the Second Amendment, where we'll uh, talk about today's armed citizen story, uh, uh, our recidivist report, and our uh, good deed of the day. We'll start with our recidivist report, New York State where the uh, New York Post reporting that a a teenager charged in an attack on a 52-year-old man in a Bronx McDonald's, uh, not going to have to remain behind bars, not going to have to post bond. He's just out, thanks to uh, concerns that he might contract the coronavirus while in custody. Uh, Acting Supreme Court Justice Linda Prouse-Lopez released 18-year-old Ernest Tolley without bail 
meaning he didn't have to post a dime to get out, uh, at his arraignment on attempted gang assault, assault, and weapons charges after the violent attack at the uh, Bronx McDonald's on Sunday. Uh, Tali is a reported member of the Patterson YG Street Gang. He was with four others when the attack took place at 6 in the morning. On Sunday. Well, that's awfully early for an 18-year-old gang member to be out. I guess maybe he had stayed out all night. Uh, his release, according to the New York Post, came nearly one month after Prowse Lopez cut loose 19-year-old Brandon Logan, who's another reputed Patterson YG member without bail, after he was charged with possessing a loaded gun without a license. Uh, the uh, spokesperson for the State Office of Court Administration told the New York Post both defendants are young adults, one with no criminal record, and taking into account the overarching situation of a nationwide health pandemic, the judge clearly felt that their promise of returning to court outweighed the potential risk of illness by being incarcerated. Now, the guy who was busted for having a gun without a license does not have a criminal record. Tolly does, including arrests for robbery, grand larceny, and weapons possessions. Uh, according or weapon possession, rather, according to police, the uh, a, a teenager was with two others, uh, 16-year-old and uh, two 17-year-olds, when they quote repeatedly threw plastic cones and wooden high chairs and booster seats uh, at the victim. He was treated at a local hospital for a gash across his left eye and other injuries. Uh, Tali not due back in court now until July 23rd, and this idea. Uh, that we're hearing again from, you know, governors and law enforcement officials that, okay, we, we, we want to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus behind, uh, you know, uh, uh, closed doors and in these penal institutions. And so in order to do that, we're going to, you know, let loose uh, nonviolent offenders, people with less than 30 days on their sentence. But we promise we're not letting any violent criminals out. I, oh, I almost said something I probably shouldn't say here on uh, uh, the program. Baloney. I'll, I'll modify it. Bull feathers. Um, they absolutely are letting out individuals who are accused of violent crimes without any bail whatsoever uh, in order to keep the jails as uh, uh, uncongested and uncrowded as possible. Now, if you want to make that case, great. But you know what? Make that case honestly. Tell people, hey, yeah, there are going to be individuals that uh, you might think, and in all honesty, we would prefer that they remain behind bars while they're awaiting trial. But that's just not going to happen right now. Instead, what we're being told is that, oh, no, 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 no. The people who are being released, they're they're almost Boy Scouts. I mean, really, they're, you know, a one merit badge away, just one bad decision. Uh, and that may be the case for some of the individuals who are being released right now. And I think that you can make an argument that uh, if someone, you know, uh, was picked up because they didn't pay parking tickets. OK, let them out. They don't have any violent criminal history. OK, fine. Uh, somebody's got two weeks left on their sentence or, or, or even a month left on their sentence for a nonviolent crime. Okay, fine. You want to let those folks out? Fine. But that's not the only thing that's happening here. And it is, um, I think it's a very unwise thing for elected officials to abuse the trust of constituents in a time of emergency. That is when we expect our, our governments to level with us and be honest with us. And when they lie about some of the steps that they're taking to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, it's only natural that we're going to trust them less at a time when we should be able to and want, and many of us want to be able to trust them more. All right. Uh, today's Armed Citizen story from the windy city of Chicago, where a 31-year-old woman able to protect herself in her home against a uh, uh, home invader. We don't have a ton of information about this case yet. We do know it happened about 6.30 uh, Wednesday evening uh, on Chicago's south side. Uh, we know that the uh, individual did gain entry to the home, was shot in the foot uh, by the 31-year-old woman who lived in uh, the residence. He was taken to a local hospital. Apparently, she was able to hold him until police arrived because uh, police took him to a local hospital. Uh, Non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, media accounts all noted, by the way, that this woman was a concealed carry holder. Even though it really doesn't matter because this took place in her home. But I guess that is sort of shorthand for legal gun owner, uh, right? Uh, a law-abiding citizen. Um, and because she's a legal gun owner who is protecting herself in her home from somebody who is not supposed to be there. I The investigation continues, but I would be shocked if she ends up facing any charges. Uh, so uh, she is our armed citizen of the day. Finally, we have our good deed of the day. Now, this guy, Gregory Richardson, he's not the actual person who performed the good deed. 
he was actually caught by police thanks to the actions of a good citizen. This uh, all went down in Youngstown, Ohio on uh, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, WKBN, uh, excuse me, Tuesday afternoon, uh, WKBN reporting that uh, Richardson led authorities on a chase in a stolen car which collided with a semi-truck. He's expected to be arraigned tomorrow in municipal court on failure to comply with the order or signal of a police officer, possession of cocaine, tampering with evidence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, Reports said an officer spotted a car that would have been reported stolen from a gas station. Somebody, okay, now don't do this. Somebody got out of their car, left it running, keys in the ignition, and walked inside the store. Don't do that. That's that's just idiotic. Don't do that. Now, you don't deserve to get your car stolen, but you very well may have your car stolen if you do something stupid like that. So, police tried to pull the car over after they uh, spotted it uh, pulling out of a, another gas station, but the car failed to stop. Instead, uh, led police on a chase. That uh, WKBN said did not end until the car collided with a Jeep, which was then wedged under a semi in the parking lot of a family dollar. Richardson tried uh, to run away, but he was uh, tripped and caught uh, by uh, city police officers Gregory Tackett and Ryan Curry, as well as a bystander. Uh, Firefighters had to cut people out of the Jeep, meanwhile, and a woman who was in the car with Richardson uh, had to be cut out of the car as well. They were taken to a local hospital to be examined. Uh, Richardson, by the way, also has a warrant out arrest for uh, a probation violation on a robbery charge uh, out of Franklin County, Ohio. So, uh, Mr. Richardson, again, known to law enforcement, but uh, now in custody, thanks in part anyway to the uh, quick thinking and uh, actions of a bystander who helped police take him into custody. That uh, bystander in the right place at the right time will enable to do the right thing. We thank you for your very good deed. That is going to do it for this edition of Bearing Arms Cam and Company. I want to thank you for being a part of the program today. Uh, coming up on the show tomorrow, David Adams is going to be with us, Legislative Affairs Director for the Virginia Shooting Sports Association. We're going to be talking about this uh, new RAND study that came out this week. Supposedly, they looked at research, all of the available research, and basically every conceivable uh, gun control law and uh, pro-Second Amendment law that you could find. Uh, and they've come out and they've said things like, well, stand your ground needs to be repealed. It's causing more murders. Really? We're going to get to the bottom of this study, talking again with our friend uh, David Adams on tomorrow's Bearing Arms Cam and Company. Until then, be well, be safe, be free, and we'll see you here soon with another Bearing Arms Cam and Company. <laughs>